Hey guys, this is Sam. Welcome back to another episode of. Welcome back to another episode of. Exhaust your friendship to make <laughs> YouTube videos. <laughs> yep, this part is definitely not scripted. <laughs> All right, let's stick with the script. Hey guys, this is Sam. Today we are doing a studio lighting test with my film camera and flashlights. Since last year, I started shoot film again. Everything I've shot so far either was natural light or small continuous light. I've actually haven't done studio shoot with my film camera yet. So today we're gonna try it out. I will show you what I use and how I sync my film camera with the flashlight, and I will show you how I use one single light to set up a couple of different looks. There are basically two ways to sync your camera with your strobe light. The most simple one is to use a sync cord. Well, obviously much longer than this. Just simply attach one side to the camera, typically locate on the side and near the top of your camera, and plug the other side into your strobe light. Another way is to use a radio trigger. This is the most common way nowadays. Radio trigger comes in variety of shape and sizes. Different brands of lighting has their own radio trigger, and some of them only work within their own brand. Some of them even has different triggers for different brands of a camera. For example, this one trigger I have been using before. This is a Profoto TTL Air Remote Control. This only work with Profoto light, and this only work with Canon camera. So if you're using Sony or Nikon or any other camera, you gotta buy this specific remote control. Well, I got this because before I only use Canon camera. So in order to make my old film camera work with the strobe light. I need a universal trigger that would work with any brands of camera, and then I got the cheapest, most basic model of Pocket Wizard. This is the most common type flash trigger. You will need two of these. One plug into your camera. This is your transmitter, and the other one plug into your flashlight. That will be your receiver. The transmitter on your camera will send out a signal to your flashlight. This thing work with pretty much any cameras. And now we can successfully trigger the strobe light. The next question is, how much light do we actually need? When we are shooting with digital cameras, we can roughly set up the light, take a shot, and then look at the picture, and then adjust the light. But with film camera, we can't see. Not only we can't see how bright the light is, we can't see the shape, the angle, the fall off. We can't see anything. And then understanding how light works becomes so critical. <laughs> Oh well, what you can do is to take a digital camera, set up the shot, set up the lighting, get the lighting right, and then transfer the same setting from your digital camera to your film camera. That way, you know exactly how your image gonna turn out before you shoot it. I mean, for how expensive films are nowadays, this is the most safe way, so you don't waste. Film, but if you are as stubborn as me, you don't want to rely on your digital camera. You can use a light meter, like this whole shoot we've done. I just rely on this. All right, let's jump in the shoot and、uh, look at some sample photos. This is our model today, Rich. What's up, guys? How you doing? My dear friend. Yes. Told you guys, I、yes. have friends. I wouldn't be here otherwise. 
We are shooting with my Canon 1V on black and white film. The first row is the uh, Elfert HP5. First of all, I took a shot with just natural light. It was a rainy day at afternoon about 3 o'clock. It was pretty dark. This was taken at f2.8 at 1 15th of a second shutter speed. This is when having a strobe light would really help. The first setup, I used a 5 foot softbox. This is one of my favorite portrait modifier. I put it right at the front of the model. I set the camera to the shutter speed and aperture I want and then I meter the light and then adjust the power of the light until it meets the setting on my camera. You can see the light is nice and soft. The whole image is very evenly lit. Compared with the natural light one, since we can close down the aperture a lot more, there are more depths and details. And then I move the light to 45 degree left to the model and uh, also added a piece of dark blue curtain as negative fill on the other side. Six. Oh, yeah, do that, do that, do that. Do that. Now we got some contrast. Oh, you were just like doing like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did lost some detail in the shadow, but it doesn't bother me. The model was sitting pretty close to the backdrop because my backdrop is so small. So if I want the background to be a little darker, I will need to control where the light is falling. So the next setup, I used another softbox with a grid on. What is my relationship to the table? <laughs> What's my character? <laughs> nice story, where I grew up. The light came off more directional. You can see the background is darker now. Move your hand up a little more to your like, shoulder. Okay. Try a shot of five, six. Look towards me. The white table also worked as bounce board. It added some fill light from under. And then I put another dark green curtain on the table that got rid of some of the bounce light. And go back to where you're at. Yeah, tilt your head this way a little bit. Yeah, right there. I kind of like the shot when I say you're interrupt my art, <laughs> but I didn't capture that. <laughs> On camera. All right. This light right now, it's really close to him. Now I'm gonna move this light back and see the difference. Okay. Do you want to see what it's at back here? In case you want to do one back here, or do you want to do that one? Do this one first. Turn your whole body that way a little bit. Just turn the chair, turn the whole thing. Yep, yep, just like that. I really like these couple of shots. All right. You stay there. We're gonna keep the same lighting, same setup, same model. <laughs> yes. Keep my job. We're gonna change a white background. And then we got rid of the hand painting backdrop and just used a white backdrop paper because I want to see how white would look in different setting. The lady knows her light. Um, we'll see that after the film is developed. Let's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> not say it's hard. <laughs> I kept the same light output, same modifier, just changed the background. With just one light and with the distance between the model and the background, the white paper look mostly gray. Can you like lean forward a little more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not like a power look, like okay. that. Yeah, yeah, like that. All right, so we're gonna 
All right, now try put your hand at your neck over here, and then I look at that way. Yep. I'm gonna use the same power output, but move the light at the front. And to make the background brighter, I move the light back at the front of the model and bring the model closer to the backdrop. And now the look changed again. Five, six. Okay. All right. I just covered the light if I stand up. It's not like it matters. If I do stand up, I do want to test the light standing up. All right, we kind of lost the very, very last bit of the footage because the camera stopped shooting. <laughs> but this is not a lighting breakdown video, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail of each setting. Uh, what I'm trying to show you is once you learn the principle of something, the most efficient way to understand it is to actually do it and then you can see what works what doesn't work and you can see the differences between all the adjustment you make ah. oh my god i can't oh i can't does that make sense just you know go do it go try it but finish this video first <laughs> and the first row is done since my Canon 1V is similar with my older Canon digital cameras, so I'm more confident with how it's gonna turn out. And then I want to see if this trigger and if this whole system would work with my older mechanical film cameras. It's kind of struggle if we want to shoot on my Pentax 645 or on the Hasselblad. I have never shot in studio with the Hasselblad before and I've never connect a flashlight with this camera before and uh... So I loaded up another roll of HP5 into my Hasselblad 501C Alright I just realized another thing <laughs> This camera I have I I don't have any brick with it. How am I gonna secure this? I'm just gonna tape it. <laughs> when in doubt. So uh, I just used a my Peak Design little hook thingy and just hooked it. <laughs> this is stupid. Don't do this. <laughs> but I mean, it worked. For this setup, I changed the softbox to a beauty dish. Front is five six. Side towards the light is F8. I don't even know if this will fire. Did the light go off? Yeah. The light went off! Yay! This makes me sound like a total amateur. <laughs> <laughs> At least it fired! Alright. And the photo turned out. It worked. Well, the trigger worked. That's all I gotta say. I keep forgetting how shallow of a depth of fill with a 6x6 camera. And also, when I'm using this camera outdoor, it didn't occur to me because every time I'm looking through a viewfinder, what I see is what I get. What I'm trying to say is, when I'm shooting outdoor, everything's so bright. But when you are shooting with a strobe light and when you close down your aperture down to f8, f11, the viewfinder is so very dark. And I have to turn it back to 2.8 and focus and then close it down with a slight movement. I, I, I just, I, I miss focus. There are a lot of pictures I just miss focus. Alright, let's 
Have you changed your soup? Cool. And we'll finish the rest. I really like that shot. <laughs> you were like, I'm just gonna grab it. Yeah. Oh, but I was, my setting wasn't right. What? My setting wasn't right because I was checking the frame, so I changed the setting. It happens. That's <laughs> 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 alright. That being said, I shot another roll after this because I. Do you think we can shoot one more color roll? Yeah. Cause I, cause I still want to develop this two roll mm -hmm. all myself. Mm -hmm. The two black and white. Yeah. Yeah. But if I mess up, <laughs> you, just, you just want something. <laughs> I want something. Something that out of I this. Can, I yeah. will send to. I will send the color roll to the feel like a lot of them were not in focus. Since I was planning on developing the black and white film by myself, I can send the color roll to the lab so if I mess up the developing process, I will also have some standard photos to compare. This is just me like not having confidence in myself. <laughs> so anyway, we shot another color roll. Anyway, the color film turned out much better. <laughs> I put the camera on the model pod and I also used a cable release and this time it's so much easier to focus and the, the photo turned out much sharper. The skin tone looks very nice. That's another thing with this camera. Like when I'm shooting digital, I'm fairly good at like capturing the emotion. Cause like when you see things, Everything is just muscle memory. I can just click, click, click. Yeah. But with these, there's so many things with these. Yeah. And like you just I have to like get that one when moment. When I see all the, ah, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's heavy sit down. Oh, actually, put your hand up. Yeah, yeah, do that. Like your eyes are like looked up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, let's just do one maybe like big laugh, like mid laughter, but like a big laugh. Alright. <laughs> nice! Alright, we're done! <laughs> we did it! Three rolls? Three rolls? Three rolls, yes. Yeah, I tried a lot of new things today. Uh, try to use flashlight with film camera. It's surprisingly smooth, yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll say that after I see the film. <laughs> and also, stand by on that. <laughs> but stand by. We'll, we'll, I have faith. We'll, yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll edit this part when I see the film. <laughs> All right, I'm falling apart here. <laughs> it's getting late, and I've been drinking a lot of coffee. <laughs> All right, now we know how everything is working technically. We can continue learning and refining our skill in using light more precisely and more efficiently. This is my second time developing a black and white film at home. I feel like HP5 turned out still a little bit too grainy for me, especially um, on 35mm. I'm really looking forward to try out some finer black and white film. Do you have a favorite black and white film stock? Leave me a comment below and let me know. We may try it. All right, this is it for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks to my dear friend Rish, who spent a very long time and patiently modeled for us. I will leave his Instagram down below. You guys can go check it out. And if you find this video any helpful, please click that like button and consider subscribe to my channel. <laughs> this is Sam. I will see you next time. Bye.